Welcome fellow cruisers, Jeff here, and I want to give you a tour of our cabin on the Enchanted Princess and tell you what we liked and what we didn't like about this stateroom. We booked stateroom E608. It's on the Emerald Deck or Deck Number 8, so fairly low on the ship. It's on the port side or left side and pretty close to the aft or back of the ship. Before I get into the tour of the room, let me just tell you some of the advantages with this location. First of all, we were one deck above the promenade deck, which has a lot of activities taking place there. But even though this is a public deck, we were never bothered by any noise or smells or anything else during our cruise. Another thing we really liked about this location was that it was pretty close to the back elevators and these were very rarely busy. You could usually count on being able to get on an elevator right away as opposed to the central elevators where it could be pretty crowded. This was also very convenient if you were planning on dining in the Amalfi dining room. The Amalfi isn't the easiest dining room to get to, but it's just two decks down and you can easily get there via the elevator or the stairs. Finally, we were just a few steps away from the laundromat, and whether you want to do a load of laundry or just run an iron over some wrinkles, you'll be able to take care of that here. E608 is an obstructed view cabin, and I chose it not because it was less expensive, but because I knew I'd be making this video, and I know there are a ton of videos out there on regular balcony cabins, but the oddball misfit cabins like this one tend to get overlooked. And for the record, the price difference between this one and a regular balcony was only about 100 bucks. So let's get to the tour. This is a standard size cabin with all of the amenities you'd expect. Princess has a reputation of having comfortable beds and this one was no exception. You also have a small desk, mirror and some drawers for storage. Then you have a small table with your refrigerator underneath. More about that in just a minute. The TV is mounted on the wall, which is more convenient, but it does take away a hidden outlet that we were able to find in some of our other cabins, like this one from our last cruise to Alaska, where the TV wasn't mounted flush to the wall. There was plenty of closet space for us, and we were given about 20 hangers, which was just barely enough. If we needed more, we could have asked our room steward, and he would have brought them right away. In this large storage cabinet, there were plenty of shelves and a safe. Right next to the storage cabinet was the bathroom. Now, if you've ever cruised before, you know that this room is notoriously small. You just get the basics in here, a sink, mirror, some shelves that are pretty small, but large enough for your toiletries. Below the sink is another shelf if you need it, and a trash can secured so that it won't move around if the ride gets a little bit rough. And then there's the shower. Again, not much room to move around in here, but I did notice that this one had a little bit of a ledge. It's not quite big enough to sit on, at least not for me, but I did put my foot up there when I was washing my legs. And speaking of feet, I'd like to warn you that there is a small step up into the bathroom, so watch your toes. Getting back to the bedroom, your night tables each have two drawers, as well as an open area for storing things. Heating and cooling is controlled by a thermostat and we found that the air conditioning worked really well in our cabin. The refrigerator is small but holds quite a bit. We were able to get two 12 packs of soda and two bottles of wine loaded into ours. Of course, the lamps are bolted down so you can't move them around, but they do have USB ports so you can charge your phones, cameras, or any other electronics that take USB charging. Before we head out into the obstructed view balcony, I'd like to ask you to please take just a moment to give this video a like by hitting that thumbs up button down there. It really helps out the channel and it helps get this video recommended to others. I'd also appreciate it if you would consider subscribing to the Backroads Tourist Channel. Every week I bring you cruise tips and tricks, news and reviews, and show you some of the fun places we've been to. I'd love to have you come along, so subscribe today. And if you're already a subscriber, 
Thank you so much. You don't know how much I appreciate it. It's good to have you here. Now is the time you've all been waiting for. Let's head out to the balcony and see what the obstructed view looks like. It was actually a little bit more obstructed than I thought it would be. The top of the lifeboats came up to about the top of the balcony railing, so you could still get a halfway decent view if you looked out straight ahead. But if you wanted to look to your right or your left, there were a lot of things in the way. But if you just wanted to go out, grab a quick look and breathe in some of that sea air, you'd definitely get what you wanted. Something else I noticed was that just to the left of the sliding glass door behind the curtain there was a switch. I couldn't figure out what this did until I looked outside. It controls the light on your balcony. I thought the balcony itself was a little bit small. The two chairs and small table took up quite a bit of the balcony area. So, no, the view wasn't great, but it did give the room some natural light, which was good. Still, I think next time we will probably opt for a regular balcony. So, here's my takeaway. If you don't mind the partially blocked view and the smallish balcony, this cabin might be just right for you. It's in a decent location for some things, but it is pretty far away from the theater, casino, and other venues at the front of the ship. The back elevators are very convenient too, so we like the location. However, if we moved up one deck in the same area, we'd still get those same benefits plus an unobstructed view. In my personal opinion, I think I would have rather spend an extra 100 bucks for a better view. But that being said, we found the room to be very comfortable and we really enjoyed our cruise. What are your thoughts about cabins with obstructed views? Let me know in the comments section. And thanks for watching today. I'm Jeff, and I hope to see you on a future cruise.